Three, two, one. Welcome to the Kids Bible Broadcast. Welcome to Kids Bible Broadcast. Oh, and this evening, welcome to Kids Bible Broadcast. Kids Bible Broadcast. Welcome to the Kids Bible Broadcast. This is the show that brings a little bit of crazy. Crazy! Crazy! A little bit of crazy. Well, good morning, boys and girls, and welcome to the Kids Bible Broadcast. I'm your host, Ray. And I'm your host, Joelle. And this is the show that brings you a little bit of crazy. And a whole lot of Bible. Welcome back to our 11th episode of the Kids Bible Broadcast. I'm excited. Hope you're excited. Joelle, you excited for this episode of KBB? I'm always excited for KBB. KBB is such a great thing to have on our Sunday morning. Yes, KBB. KBB. KBB is so fun to say. It's fun to say KBB, and welcome <laughs> to another episode of KBB, boys and girls. We're glad to have you. And this episode is going to be an exciting, great one. It really is. I know actually today's episode is about um, Jesus loving us and loving me and loving you. Jesus loves me. It's going to be a great episode, boys and girls. We have a lot in store. Joelle, what's start, what are we starting off with? So I'm pretty sure according to my schedule, sure. you're actually doing the verse with Scarlett. I am. Which is about Jesus loving everyone. Jesus loves everyone. That's going to be a great segment to start off with. Mm. And then we have our lesson segment. Our lesson, we've got a little bit of a surprise for you because we have a new person and giving us our lesson this week and that's going to be about how you're never too bad for Jesus love yeah then straight after that she's going to be going over to Camilla and Camilla is going to give us our object lesson segment talking about how big Jesus love is yeah I'm really excited to actually watch all of these as well it's so. going to it's going to be a great episode it's going yeah. to be a lot of fun and we're going to learn a lot but before we get into it boys and girls we're going to go back to last week's challenge. Oh, yes. Now, last week was our 10th episode. How great was it? 10 yeah. episodes. Uh, I'm still celebrating, boys and girls. And we asked every single one of you to celebrate with us. Some of you sent in cakes. Some of you just told us how much you loved KBB. Some even dressed up as some of us. That was really cool. So you know what, boys and girls? We're going to get take it away and show you some of those videos. I like KBB because of Professor Bobby and Farmer Paul. They make me laugh. What's your favourite part of KBB? Oh, we're saying Scarlett. Hello boys and girls. I'm Scarlett and on the count of three I'm going to put the verse up on the screen. One, two, three. And now we decorate it. Happy 10th episode, KBB. Mm. Mm. Thank you so much, boys and girls, for sending those through. I love those videos. That cake looked delicious, Jess. And Adriana, I really thought that was Scarlet for a minute. Anyway, so yeah, I really enjoyed those. Thank you again for sending them in. Um, now, as mentioned earlier, Ray is actually with Scarlett and he's going to be going through the verse segment talking about how Jesus loves everyone. So guys, take it away. 
Okay, boys and girls, I'm excited for this one. It's another verse segment. We're going to get started, right? Scarlett, good to see you. Good to see you, Raymond. Happy to be back. I'm excited to be back because it's been a while since you and I have done a verse together. Yeah, I usually have Joel. Where's Joel? Go up here to there. Okay. Okay, all right. Well, let's get excited. Yeah, let's, let's, yeah. let's do it. All right, We're doing so a verse today. We're doing a verse. And I hear today it's going to be a little bit different. Yeah, this one is going to be a little bit different because okay. I really want the kids to, to memorize this one. I feel like it's sure. a really important one. It's really fundamental to everything that we believe in. Okay, so we're definitely going to take like the words away, do everything that we no, want. No, 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 we're going to do something different, okay? Completely different. Yeah, I'm actually going to try and, and do some actions to teach the kids this verse. Hold on, we're doing actions today. Yeah, we're doing actions. We need, okay. we need the kids really involved today. All right, you know what then? Yeah. Hey, boys and girls, how are we doing? Um... Mums, dads, how are we going? All right, get up. All right, off your couches, everyone up. Mum, that's it. You can get up with the kids. You're going to do it with the kids. Okay, dad, yeah, I know. It's embarrassing. Oh, the kids are going to laugh at me. Ha <laughs> ha. Up, let's go. We're going to do some action. So everyone get up. Everyone get excited. <laughs> We're going to do some actions together. Yeah. All right, let's do you this. You seem really excited, Raven. I'm, I'm keen. You okay, know me. I'm I love good. a good action. So let's do it. Okay, so let's, let's put the verse up so that they can see which one we're going to memorize okay. today. Verse is up on the screen. Yeah. We'll so go through it once. That's it. Let's go through it once. It okay. comes from Luke 19.10, mm -hmm. and it says, For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. It's actually one of my favorite verses. I think it's really important. I think it just reminds us that... Jesus loves everybody, and when he, he came, does. he came to save everybody. Yeah, and, and what's great is it shows that it didn't matter who they were, he came to save everyone, and yeah. he loves everyone. That's awesome. Okay, so what are these actions that you're so proud of? Let's do it. Okay, well, I'm, we're just, we're just going to go through it. Okay. Let's see if this helps the kids memorize this verse, okay? Sure. So, for the Son of Man is talking about who? Jesus. Jesus. For the Son of Man. Okay, so, for the Son of Man. For Jesus is come. Is come. To seek, which means to look. To seek. For, to seek. And to save. To save. That which was lost. Which go? Hey, I, was, I was lost. And I've just come back. Okay. All was, right. Fair enough. Lost. Yeah. All right. You know what? Okay. Mums, dads, boys and girls, we're going to do it with Scarlett this time. Yeah. Do you think you know them? I think I know them. Hey, okay. you just follow us. We're going to help you out. Mums, dads, walk out of the living room. Okay, let's try it. Everyone, let's do it all together. Let's have some fun. Okay, okay? let's yeah. do it. One, two, three. For, For the, the Son of Man, of man is come, come to, to seek and to, to save, save that, that which, which was lost. I love that. I that that's did. really cool. Did, did everyone do it? I think so, I think but I think did. there were a couple of dads that didn't. We can see you. Let's do it. Let's go. Let's do it all together one last time. All right. Let's say it all together. Okay. Right. So one, two, three. For, For the Son, Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which, which was lost. That is brilliant. I love that. Boys and girls, I hope you had fun with that. Mums and dads, I hope you did too. It's such a great verse. I think it's so important. It's fundamental to know that Jesus came for all of us. It's, it's beautiful because God was perfect. Jesus was perfect. And it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter who you are or who you were. Jesus loves you. And it's so great to know that, just like the song says, Jesus mm -hmm. loves me. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves everybody. Well, Scarlett, thank you for that. Thank you. I hope it helped first wake the kids up yep. and help them memorize this verse and i hope every single parent at home helped us out with that thank you for being good sports we're going to take it back to the desk thank you so much ray and scarlett that was a perfect way to explain that verse uh, now we are actually moving on to our lesson and as mentioned earlier we do have a special guest you guys may have seen him walking around at church uh, he's been in sunday school he was even a star uh, in kingdom kids so, I'm not going to give you any more clues. Take it away. Thanks, Joelle. Well, good day, boys and girls. It's Adam here to teach today's lesson. I got a call from Ray this week, and I tell you what, I was very, very excited to get the call out of retirement. It's great to be back with you, boys and girls. But I'm even more excited today to teach you a lesson about Zacchaeus. He's one of my favorite Bible characters. And so, I'm going to invite you now to grab your Bible. Go and grab it if you don't have it. Hopefully, all of you have been reading your Bibles. You don't have too much dust on there. 
You pull your Bible out and we're going to read our passage together today from Luke chapter 19 and we're going to read the first six verses, the first six verses of Luke chapter 19. Let's do it all together, starting in verse 1. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, who was chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press, because he was little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. Boys and girls, what's the first thing that you think of when you hear the name Zacchaeus? No doubt you've heard his name before. We talk about him in Sunday school and in Bible club all the time. I'm pretty sure that the first thing that you would have thought of was that Zacchaeus was a very little man. He was a short man. And we even sing a song in Bible club and in Sunday school about that. And hopefully we can get back soon and we can be singing those great old songs. But we sing that song about Zacchaeus. And he was a wee little man. And a wee little man was he. And so that's the story that we're going to talk about today, Zacchaeus. But the, the Bible tells us a bit more about Zacchaeus than just the fact that he was a short man. There's some other things that the scriptures tell us about Zacchaeus that we ought to know if we're going to study his life. Notice, number one, that Zacchaeus lived in a place called Jericho. Now, Jericho, to many of us, would be a familiar place because we remember back in the book of Joshua that the children of Israel marched around the walls of Jericho and it fell down. And so thousand, approximately about a thousand years later, we have this man called Zacchaeus and he's living in a place called Jericho. And, and so too, as I live in Oatlands and you live where you live, Zacchaeus's place of residence was Jericho. So we've got this short man who lives in Jericho. And notice also the Bible tells us that he was chief amongst the publicans. Now publicans is perhaps not a word that you would hear very often these days, but it simply just means a tax collector. So Zacchaeus' job essentially was to supervise or to be the boss over the tax collectors in the area. And so his job was to go around to collect money from the people of Israel to give to the Roman government. So that was Zacchaeus's job. He was the chief of the publicans or the tax collectors. So we've got this short man who lives in Jericho, who's a tax collector. The Bible also tells us in the passage that we read today that he was rich. Zacchaeus had lots and lots and lots of money. He could do really whatever he wanted. So we've got this rich man who was short, who lived in Jericho, who was a tax collector. So the Bible gives us a bit of context about this guy. And so we jump into the story straight away and, and we've got this guy, Zacchaeus, and, and he hears somehow about this person called Jesus and how Jesus was to pass through Jericho. And, and you know, Jesus, at that point in time, his ministry was taking off and more and more people knew about him because of the things that he was doing. He healed the sick. He made the deaf to hear, the blind to see. He did some incredible things up to this point in time. And so Zacchaeus somehow has heard about Jesus and he hears that he's coming through his town of Jericho. And so Zacchaeus goes, oh, well, you know, I would probably like to go and see this Jesus and see what's going on. So anyway, Zacchaeus, when he hears that Jesus is coming through town, he goes out of his house and he goes down into, goes down into town and there's a crowd formed. But you know, the problem with Zacchaeus is he's a very short person, as we said before, and as we sing about. Zacchaeus was tiny, the Bible tells us. And so you might experience this as a younger person. When you're short and you go into a crowd of people, you can't see over the tall people. You're, you're short, you can't see over them. And so Zacchaeus had the same problem. He was unable to see Christ. So what Zacchaeus did is he raced ahead of the group that had surrounded around Jesus and he climbed up a sycamore tree to see what he could see. And so Zacchaeus is up in this sycamore tree trying to catch a glimpse of, of Jesus and see if he can figure out what's going on. And so as the crowd continues to come by, Jesus comes along. 
And notice what Jesus says in verse 5. We read it before. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. Now, boys and girls, I don't think, at least from reading this passage, that Zacchaeus had actually met Jesus before. How did Jesus know his name? Well, boys and girls, Jesus is God. The Bible teaches us that. And because Jesus is God, he knows all things. He knows you. He knows me. He knew Zacchaeus before Zacchaeus knew who he was. God has a plan for each and every one of our lives. Even before we were born, God has a plan for us. And so too he had a plan for Zacchaeus. What's God's plan for each and every one of us? That we would be saved and come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ in our lives. And so Jesus, he tells Zacchaeus to come down and he says, today I'm going to go to your house. Just incredible. Jesus going to Zacchaeus' house, he was over the moon, the scriptures tell us. He made haste and came down and received him joyfully. What a story. But as it always goes, there's always someone who's going to complain. And so the people around Zacchaeus, they go, oh, how could Jesus go to the house of this sinner? You know, this is, this is just not right. How could Jesus do this? And Zacchaeus looks past his accusers. And he says this incredible thing down there in verse 8. He says, half of my goods, I'm going to give them to the poor. And if I've taken anything from anyone wrongly, I'll give them back four times that which I took. Wow. Zacchaeus is a changed man. Absolutely incredible. And Christ says further down at the end of the passage that salvation has come to Zacchaeus' house. What a great story, boys and girls. Quickly. What can we learn from this story? There are many things that we can learn from the life of Zacchaeus. Many, many lessons. But perhaps the greatest lesson we learn from the life of Zacchaeus, and we've talked about that verse already today, that the reason Jesus Christ, or the purpose Jesus Christ came to this earth, was to seek and to save that which was lost. Jesus' purpose in coming to earth was not to be a great social reformer, Jesus' purpose in coming to earth was not to just go around healing people and be this great doctor and make medical breakthroughs. Jesus' purpose was to seek and to save that which was lost. Boys and girls, we are lost in our sins if we are without Christ. The Bible teaches us for all of sin and come short of the glory of God. It doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter what your job is, whether you're a student, whether you're at university, whether you're at school. It doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't even matter how tall or short you are, what the color of your skin is. We are all sinners, the Bible teaches us. And because we're sinners, we deserve to be punished. The, the scriptures teach us that the wages of sin is death, separation from God for eternity. Thankfully, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And that's the reason why Jesus came. He came to redeem us so that we could be with him one day. And so the Lord has promised those that come to him, he will not cast out. Boys and girls, come to Jesus today. Be like Zacchaeus. Seek for Jesus and you'll find him. Back to the desk. What a great lesson. Thank you so much, Adam. That was awesome. It's just so great to know that no matter how bad we are and no matter how bad Zacchaeus was, I mean, Zacchaeus was a pretty bad man. And what are you doing? Okay, good. Sorry, boys. All right, let's go. Come on. Um, no matter how bad Zacchaeus was, because he was a pretty bad guy, um, Jesus still loved him. And no matter what sins you and I commit, boys and girls, no matter how bad we could be, Jesus still loves us, and he's just waiting for us to come and talk to him. That's awesome. So thank you for that, Adam. That was great. Now, we're going to go over to our object lesson. Camilla's out there. Joel's with her. And they're going to talk about how much God loves everybody. 
Thanks, Ray. I am back here with Camilla, who will be doing our object lesson. Camilla, how are you? I'm good, Joelle. How are you today? I'm great. I'm really excited to see what you have in store for us. Um, I had a look earlier, and I can see you've got some random objects. So I just want to show the boys and girls what you have. Yep. So we have a ball. Mm -hmm. We have scissors. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and we have a plain piece of paper. Yes, we do. So what exactly are you going to be doing with these items? So, Joel, as always, each item represents something different. So the ball is going to represent the world and all the people in the world. Yep. And the paper is going to represent God's love for the people in the world. Okay. So, Joel, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. Which is bigger, the ball or the piece of paper? Camilla. Boys and girls, is she tricking me? Of course the ball is bigger. I know. I just wanted to make sure you knew. So oh, okay. obviously, guys, this ball is much bigger than this piece of paper. And, and I'm going to fold this paper in half and show that it's even smaller now. So this ball is definitely bigger than this piece of paper. Yep. But God's love is much bigger than the world. And he has enough love to cover all of the world. Okay. So, so I'm just going to do a little bit of a trick here to this paper. Yeah, so you're just cutting that. Now, why you do that, whatever you're doing, Camille, I did want to ask. I know my parents love me so much, and I'm sure yours do too, and all the boys and girls at home. Does God even love us more than that? Oh, most definitely, Joelle. God wow. loves us so, so much. And you know what? He loves us no matter what we do, no matter what sin we commit, no matter if we accidentally did something wrong, if we disobeyed our parents. You know what? God loves us so much, and he loves us more than anyone else in the world. Wow. So his love is bigger than what we could ever imagine. So whether what size we are, what yep. colour we are, he loves us. Yep, if we're big, if we're small, yeah. if we have curly hair like Scarlett's, <laughs> if we have floppy hair like Raymond's, he's going to love us regardless. <laughs> okay, so just watch boys and girls, she's just cutting the ends I believe. Yeah, it's a bit of a tricky one this little, this little gadget here, but you know what, <laughs> it's all going to work out in the end for me to show you. So Joel, can you pick up the ball for me? Sure. So what's the ball represent again, Joel? Uh, the world. You're right. Okay. It represents the world. So now I've folded this piece of paper and I'm just going to open it up and show you that now it is so much bigger than it originally was. Remember, this is what the paper looked like and I folded it in half, but now it's big enough. Oh, it broke, but anyway, we'll keep going. Broke again. It's big enough to cover the whole world and it can probably even go around twice wow. because God has so much love for us. You know what? I have another one. I'm going to use that one. See, <laughs> God has so much love for us and he just has too much love for us. More than anyone else will ever have, will ever meet, God loves us the most. Wow, thank you so much for that. That was a great idea just to see how big God's love is. So thank you so much again, Camilla. I will see you later. Yeah. Boys and girls, I'll see you back at the studio. See ya. What a great object lesson, boys and girls. Jesus love is so big and it's so much bigger than we could ever imagine so thank you for that thank you for being with our show today it's been a great show what a great 11th episode it's always great on kbb it's it's phenomenal on kbb love kbb it's great to be here on kbb i <laughs> can't wait to be back next week on kbb kbb's been great and today on kbb we learned about how great jesus love is how big it is how much he loves us mm. and you know what we're never too bad for his love it was an awesome episode. Thank you so much for joining us this week on KBB, boys and girls. Thank you so much. We hope you had a fantastic viewing of KBB. We'll see you next week.